I now call to order the new Carlisle City Council right. meeting, May yes. 6, 2019, at 7 p.m. Mrs. Burner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. No, I'm not ready. My jacket thing. I'm going back. Fantastic. If you don't mind saying for the invocation tonight. <laughs> <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to gather here and to live in the freest country in the world. Father God, let us continue to move our city forward and please protect our firefighters, our EMS, and our police, or deputy sheriffs. Jesus, Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You know what I'm saying? The pledge of the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have action on the minutes for 4, 15, 19? So moved. Second. Good. I wanted to come so bad. Fantastic. Any discussion on the minutes? Did you have a, you had a question about the minutes? Oh. Oh. Mr. Chambie was the second. Oh, okay. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shane. Yes. Minutes accepted six to two. Good report. Moving on to communications. There are none tonight. <coughs> City Manager's report. Mr. Bridge. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Reynolds. Uh, members of Council, members of public, I'd like to share with you the City Manager's report. Uh, new buildings updates. Not a lot of updates on the initial design. Uh, however, I have been asked to start taking down some ceiling tile. Uh, so that way the architect can get underneath it to see what's up there. So um, I will be shooting an email out to probably some council members uh, here either this evening or tomorrow uh, seeking some a few volunteers. I talked with our fire chief. Apparently there's this poke tool they have we can just rip them right down with. Uh, so we'll be doing that. Um, hopefully get that done within the next week. Fire display update. Um, we The date is set for June 29th of 2019. Um, but I did want to have a, a very short discussion with council regarding security at the event. Uh, in the contract that I executed, it calls for us to uh, provide our security, especially around the perimeter where the people are not supposed to be. So I do know that we're getting about four cadets from the sheriff's office, but I would like to go ahead and get uh, maybe an extra, uh, at least two more uh, regular deputies to have on staff as well. So I'll be reaching out to our Sergeant Underwood to facilitate that, but I think that's going to help us with the uh, security as well. Does any council have any objection to that? Think so. No. Okay. Uh, Madison Street. Yep. Mr. Lindsay. Is it possible to get more than just four cadets from the sheriff's office? Um, I'll have to reach back out. I have not been involved in that discussion, uh, but that's okay. what they have offered. I mean, if, if we could get more than maybe the the uh, couple of extra deputies we have, we'd kind of be backing them up so they would have a little more bite to them. Well, and with the cadets, <clears throat> I talked to Sergeant Underwood about that because I actually reached out to the deputy in charge of the cadet program. And he said that he thought it would be okay. However, Sergeant Underwood spoke with Major Reynolds and recently said that um, the cadets are not security and that they could be there for uh, community policing purposes. However, they would not be able to be any type of security. So he said that um, a written request from the city would have to be sent into the major requesting the cadets be a part of that. However, they'd have to put very, very strict guidelines on what the cadets could and couldn't do. How many did? I'm go sorry. Go ahead. Uh, well, he said that we ha could have anywhere from four to, to ten cadets just based off of they can't force them to do it. But I want to say they have probably somewhere around 20 in the program, and they would just put it out as a, hey, who would like to do this? And however many sign up is, is how many we could get. How many deputies are you thinking about having, Mr. Bruce? Uh, with that conversation, I'm thinking I'm going to get three or four. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Scott, I didn't know that they didn't have any policing power. Yes, or correct. Okay. No. Can I ask a definite question? Go ahead. <coughs> the, de the cadets, they're going to, can they help with the traffic control? Yes, as long as, as long as they have to be with, like within an eyesight of, of a deputy, they can't be on their own without a deputy in the area. But yes, they can assist with stuff like that. They just have like no arresting powers, no ability to, no, no, you know, resolve a conflict or something like that. But yes. 
I mean, you and I had discussed on how right, to get right. the traffic out of there. Correct, yeah. So if I'm assigned out on, you know, Main Street or out on Mill Road, then I could have four cadets with me, you know, helping me in that area with traffic. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions? Yep. Mr. Bridge. Thank you. Uh, Madison Tree School, it's still on there because I, I do want it to be a topic of discussion. However, we still are waiting uh, back, uh, we're still waiting some, are on some information from some people that we are want to engage discussions with. So as soon as we have a full plate to bring forth to the citizens and council, we'll do such. But I don't want that to go away. So that's why it's on there again. Uh, 2019 community garage sale again, that is for the weekend of June 22nd to 23rd of this year. Uh, so please. Uh, put some stuff out. I think it grows every year and it's a great event for our city. So we, we love putting this on. So again, the weekend of June 22nd and 23rd. Uh, 2019 Memorial Day Walk, that is actually just right around the corner. I'm starting to get a few calls on it now. Um, some of the uh, things from last year that people had discussed, maybe with some council members, definitely with me as well, was the length of the walk. Um, starting at Howard's IGA, and then walking all the way down to the cemetery is, is trying for some folks, especially if it's uh, one of those Memorial Days where it's extremely hot and muggy. So one of the things I wanted to brought up with council today is um, uh, maybe changing the starting location of that. Um, what's your guys' viewpoints on that? Say if we started at the city building or I've reached out to the Church of the Brethren uh, to have it start downtown to kind of reduce that walk. Most of the people are just at the cemetery already and very few people walk. Council. So what's council's opinion on that? Mr. Mayor, yeah, I, I have no problem with it. I mean, I would have to agree with everything you said, so I think maybe starting at the city building would be fine. I mean, just my two cents. What city building? <clears throat> I got that one. Yeah. The new one or the old one? Well, it won't be done. Well, no, the, the old, well, the one we're in now okay. because of the parking lot. Right. Do you think they don't have enough cars for everyone? Hmm. Yeah, the reason I, I suggested the church because some people like to walk through downtown. Yeah. So the church is there. And we do have their blessing as long as there's nothing else going on. Uh, but you do, if we start at the city building, we're negating our, our downtown yeah. 100%. Yeah, I don't mind starting at the church. Mr. Cobb, you had something first? Hmm. Yeah. You had your hand up. No, I just, just like to point Mr. Lindsay. <laughs> Isn't the, uh, does the fire department participate in that or any other uh, yeah, fire vehicle? Yeah, 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 yeah. So starting at the city building wouldn't work, I don't think, unless you line them up on church. So if the church of the brethren would allow us to use their parking lot, that could be worked out better, I think. I think the church is the better of the two just because you get to walk through downtown and right. see that. All right. Sounds good. So okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Church of the brethren? And if something changes, if they have an event going on, I'll have to get back with council. We'll have to change that uh, location again. But early education is fine. Okay. Um, I don't have the details, but it's usually we amass at 11:30, I think, and then start walk, the start walks at noon. There. So it is. I'm sorry I didn't put the date on there, but it is May 25th. It's a Saturday, It's always a Saturday before Memorial Day. And the last thing is our health stats. They are attached to the city manager report. So if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. Council, any questions for the city manager? Nope. Thank you, Mr. Britt. Thank you. Comments from members of the public? Please limit comments to five minutes or less. <clears throat> yes, go ahead. Yes, ma'am, please. Just for Ms. Sperner. Do you mind giving your name and address, please? Janelle Zimmerman in a 219 Prentice Drive. And I, I just had a question um, at the Meet the Candidates meeting. Uh, Becky had said something about she needed some kind of form or rules or something for them to be able to do their job as the park thing. And they did not have this? And hadn't this been like two years or something? Mr. Who's Bridge, responsible for that and why has not that happened? Mr. Bridge, do you want to take that one? Yeah, yeah um, we had a work session on it. Um, one of the council members had brought something over from Huber Heights um, and it was just too encompassing. It had to deal with our Board of Zoning Appeals, so we had a work session on it. Um, we haven't got anything back from our attorney on it. So, and it's not been two years. I don't think it's been that quite oh, that just, long. Okay. You know, year and a half. Um, but I think it all started with 
taking something that didn't need to be changed all that much and then turning into this thing that governed a bunch of boards that are already governed by our charter. Um, and then I think it just got away from us, to be honest with you. But that's a, that's a policy thing from the council. It has, Is there any way it really has nothing to do with the ministry. They still have their old bylaws, correct? Yeah. And they can still operate underneath those old bylaws? Yeah, the old bylaws are still Nothing is stopping them? They can use the old bylaws? We didn't know that. We were never given old bylaws. <laughs> we were told that nothing existed because it had been more than 10 years since the Parks and Recreation Board had been. Did we have old bylaws? I was under the assumption that we there had, had been bylaws. So, sorry? There had to have been bylaws at some point in time. Yeah. I think it got, you want my honest opinion? I'm just going to shoot straight from the hip. It got over complicated last time. You know, the bottom line is I think there's a lot of discussion between volunteers taken away from city workers' work, and I've reiterated multiple times just put a sentence in there that says, give us a call, you know, and let us run it by the union. The union's not going to get mad if you want to go paint stuff. The union's going to get upset when, let's say, we have a special event in the Parks and Rec and the Parks and Rec Board is supplying their own security to, like, block off roads. That's overtime availability for our union members. They're going to want to take part of that. But I think it just got too complicated with people want to have control over it. It doesn't need to be overly complicated. This is what they can. This is what they can't do. If it's a union question, run it by the city manager. If not, be done with it and move forward. So we what needs need to be done so they can document I'm sorry. the government. What needs to be done so they can do their job? I think they need to get with council and get everyone get council and them on the same page and move it forward. Do they have to have a special meeting for that or can it be done at a council meeting? That's this is a this is a group that deals with their council specifically. It has nothing to do with the administrative side of things. That's a policy measure that needs to be done between council and the group who's doing the Okay. Uh, I thought we had them. Would no, the council be I willing to set something up for that then, so that yeah. can get done? I thought they'd written up their new. Do they? Yeah. If they want to submit their new bylaws, is that we no, submit them to us, and, and we'll get those through. Okay them, so. They did. They submitted bylaws the first time around, and then they were shot down. And then I think I don't want to name any names. One of the council members brought something from Huber Heights, and it was super thick. And we have a work session on that. I sat there and I went and changed everything. We didn't even get through the whole packet on that work session because you get the more than that packet from Weaver Heights that dealt with the Board of Zoning Appeals, their planning board. Our charter and stuff already governed those boards. So what they presented to us, it was never going to fly because it was too encompassing. And I had brought that up at the work session too. I'm like, this is kind of overkill for what we're trying to do. So I think it just needs to be so simple. This is what they want to do. If it is a question about interfering with the day-to-day -day operations of the city, have them have someone contact the, the city manager. We can run that through our union president. They sign off on it. Good to go. It's good to go. Fantastic. Mike, do you have anything on it? No, I mean, I, if I'm remembering correctly, I didn't see an issue with the, the ones that they originally presented. But did you say those were too simple? I didn't say anything of it. No, I I'm asking. I couldn't. I was making sure I, I misunderstood. I don't. I don't know why, or I don't know why the first round they submitted was rejected by council. Right. I, I don't. Okay. I mean, I don't. Do you want to add in that caveat to the original rules that they needed to get the approval by you to make sure they're not getting it? I think the first one they submitted was more than suffice. Okay. If I, I have to go back and read it, but it was very well constructed. It was like four or five pages long. It was straight to the point, and it dealt strictly with the Parks and Rec Board. Okay. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, we can bring that back next council meeting yeah. and, and put it the rest. You know. Good to me. That's what I think we should do. Council. Can you send that out to us again? Yeah. I can. Or, or tell I us when it was. You I, got it. It I still got it on my computer. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's do that. Sounds good. Or give us the date that they originally sent to us, if anybody knows that, and then we probably have them. We can look them up. So will they do this soon? Next meeting. Okay. Because Thank you. The plan. Thank you, Ms. Evers. Sorry. My name is Brandy Mullet. I live at 522 Hamilton Avenue, and I got up here to discuss that issue, so I wasn't just calling out for my seat. Um, and I completely agree with what Randy said. Um, the, the 
document that was submitted for the Parks and Recreation Bylaws, I wrote it. Um, I will be completely honest in that I researched other um, cities to kind of figure out what the appropriate terminology was and, you know, to try to make it sound as official as possible without being way more than what we need. And I can, I have a copy of that Huber Heights thing. It's like 52 pages long. It goes way too in depth into things that we will never even consider doing. Basically, we just want permission to have, you know, do an Easter egg hunt. And we're getting a lot of flack back from that, especially from people on Facebook, because it's something that we've pitched the idea out last year and it fell through. Um, and people are like, well, you know, so and so is saying that they've been, they're going to do this Easter egg hunt, and I've never seen it come to fruition. But at the same time, we don't want to do anything as the Parks and Recreation Board without having council's blessing on it. You know, we don't want to be stepping on toes and like, well, we're going to do this regardless of what council thinks. We want it to be a cohesive relationship where we come to you and say, hey, we would really love to do X, Y, Z and we discuss it, have a work session, whatever we need to do to make it happen. And it's unfortunate that Becky and I were appointed to the Parks and Recreation Board in the fall of 2017. And here we are in almost summer of 2019 and we haven't been able to do anything. Um, it's also unfortunate because money was budgeted, $10,000 was budgeted to Parks and Recreation for last year and we didn't use it because we felt we weren't allowed without having operational guidelines and bylaws to go by. So now our budget from what I understand for this year has been slashed to $3,500 and it's not because we didn't want to use the money, but we didn't feel like we could, if that makes sense. So um, I would love to see that push through. I have, Becky and I have a lot of great ideas. Um, we also would like to get more public awareness about this position that's open. Um, since Stacy Lighty has moved out of city limits, she's no longer eligible for the committee. Um, we would like to, to see if we can drum up some interest to get some more people involved and see what we can do. You know, we would love to help with the 4th of July fireworks um, in any way that we can. There's events that we want to put on. I really was looking forward to trying to find a way to expand the Memorial Day walk to be more inclusive, but also better advertised, try to get more participation because I think that's a great event, if you will, um, to honor those who've sacrificed for us. But so next meeting sounds great. Push it through. <laughs> Mr. Bridge, can we also advertise that empty position on the Newport Law Facebook page? Uh, yeah. So we can start jumping up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Linda Eggleston, Noakowski, 317 South Main Street. There are a few things that are going on in the city centered on the city council that have been gnawing on me. There are four issues in particular. One, the issuance of a proclamation by the mayor, vice mayor, and also signed by the first lady of New Carlisle and distribution to two individuals. That proclamation read, therefore I, Ethan Reynolds, Mayor of New Carlisle, and I, William Lindsay, Vice Mayor of New Carlisle, do hereby declare that innocent human life, including fetal life, must always be protected and that society must protect those who cannot protect themselves. This proclamation was made in Warren County the proclamation was pre presented to Janet Porter and Lori Byers. I found out about it through a post on the Warren County Right to Life Facebook page. This proclamation was sealed with what would appear to be the official seal of the city of New Carlisle on March 20th. 
The picture was posted April 2nd. The identification of the event was posted on April 3rd. This was the day after the last council meeting and the mayor did not seem to see fit to inform council that he intended to issue it. Proclamations by definition are usually an official public announcement. By an act of proclamation, a government declares to the public about the government's action. It is a written or printed document containing a declaration by the government issued by a president or governor. That's the legal definition in the legal code. Traditionally, pr proclamations from the city were to declare official events such as the Heritage of Flight Festival, a um, commendation, I believe a certain well-known man's birthday was commemorated, or a business in the city like uh, a proclamation that was issued on the anniversary of the opening of a restaurant. This particular proclamation is political. It was issued days before the heartbeat law went to vote, which was backed by even daylight boss. This has nothing to do with anything in New Carolina. The proclamation does not speak my values. It does not, does it speak for a majority of other people in the city? Do Ethan or Bill know? Does the first lady know? A second activity going around has been gnawing me is the participation of council members in elections in this city. In the last election, we had a rumor that members of council were enticing people to run by exchanging favors. An old scratch, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Nothing was done to deal with this issue, but the only real damage that was done is that we have the current mayor and vice mayor. Other members of the transaction have seen the light and out, opted out. Thirdly, Tomorrow we are looking to resolve the fiasco to replace Aaron Lighty days short of nine months ago. The council in that fiasco adequately demonstrated that they don't pay attention to the city charter, the rules of the game. They also can't count. Fourthly and finally, after council voted on its desire to not, or voiced its desire not to get involved in the election by hosting a meet the candidate night, Mr. Lindsay has been intimidating people in town by taking pictures of political signs. Whether his intent is to intimidate them or not, he is, in fact, intimidating them. Mr. Lindsay has also contacted the Republican Party to assist him in supporting one of the candidates in a non-partisan election. I would like to propose that council revisit a charter review and perhaps review the rules of council to delineate the correct conduct and behavior expected of elected council members define what is allowed by the term proclamation and institute council review before all proclamations. All of this in words that can be commonly understood even by council members. Thank you so much. Council? Comments? Thank you. Mrs. Burke. Are you all right? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> can you Thank talk? Thank you for the words. <clears throat> Would you like me to take over your duties for a minute? We can no, gladly switch here. 
I think we're good. Okay, resolutions? <laughs> <laughs> I was right. just giving you support. That's all. Okay, I'm good now. <laughs> we have none this evening. Ordinances, we have one. Ordinance 19-08, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the leasing of Gastineau Baseball Field, property of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, to New Carlisle Diamondbacks Adult Baseball Club. Council. So moved. Second. Is that Mr. Clemens? Yes. Yeah. An exclamation of this ordinance. We uh, lease uh, the Diamondbacks build out, and then every time that lease renewal is up, that has to go in front of council for approval. Council, questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Berner. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. <laughs> Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shami. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Ordinance accepted. Zero. I'll finish this up for you, Ms. Berner. Thank you. <laughs> Other business, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Crime Watch is Wednesday, May 8th at 6.30 p.m. here at the Smith Park oh, Shelter House. City offices will be closed May 27th in observation of Memorial Day. Uh, 2019 Memorial Day Walk to Remember is Saturday, May 25th, 2019. Our intergovernmental inter meeting will be held Monday, September 30th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. The location is at the Tecumseh High School. Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Rich. Um, just on that last intergovernmental meeting, it is not until September, but I wanted to put it on there so you guys get it on your calendar. They uh, had a meeting in between them, but they canceled it for July. So if you're wondering why there's not one over the summer, they canceled it. So the next one's in September. Fantastic. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. I just wanted to, uh, again, a uh, big thank you to the two ladies that are running for the empty council seat. Um, best of luck to both of you and everyone. Uh, obviously, don't forget to go out and vote. And I'll, I'll be looking forward to having someone next to me finally. I feel like nobody likes me down here. but. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, that's all right. So, just yeah, don't forget to go out and vote and support your candidate. At the school, right? At the school. Uh, to come to school, that's correct. Mr. Cook. I have a couple of things. Looking at the rules of council, they do not address the proclamation issue. And as Linda had brought up, Perhaps we need to instruct the law director to draw up an amendment to the rules of council, stating that all proclamations must come before council and be approved by a majority, and that any and all proclamations shall be given in council chambers on a council night. I'll make that in a motion. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Discussion? Uh, since you brought it up again, Bill, I'll touch on it. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, unless there's a situation where it needs to be done outside of a council meeting, and I can't really think of the exact reason off the top of my head, but I mean, I think it's better if they're done here, especially for the individual or the group that's getting it, because then it's on an official record for, you know, years and years down the road. So, you know, when someday when we're all long gone, someone can look it up in a newspaper or an internet article or whatever it's on by that time, and they can, you know, see that this business had gotten this. Uh, you know, this proclamation, you know, when it's done outside, you know, there's not much of a record of it. I just think that's more beneficial to the person who's getting it or the group. Mrs. Verner. Mr. Cook. Yes. <coughs> Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. No. Okay. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Motion accepted by the one. Council, anything else? Yes. Mr. Cook. Also, I think Linda brought up the fact of the Charter Review Commission. I would like to make that in the form of a motion that Council again reviews this Charter Review as soon as possible. We took that vote less than 90 days away. And that was not an ordinance. It was a motion, which would 
apply in our rules of council. If not, that's fine. But I thought that we all have discussed this and voted on it. But if you would like to continue. Yeah. I think it does extend to a motion, too. I think it does as well. We're on a check. You say it is in the rules of council? We're on a report, sir. Mr. Bridge is looking. Is it in the rules or it may be in the charter, too? I think it's, I think it's in the rules. I believe it's in voting procedure. Yeah, no motion, resolution, or ordinance having been voted upon shall be reintroduced within 90 days, except with a majority concurrence of council. Mr. Mayor. So it sounds like you would need to do a motion to remove the 90 days and then put that motion back on, back on for the. <coughs> That's what I, was, okay. I just want to make sure I understand it right. Yeah. So you have to vote to suspend rules of council first. Yeah. Yeah. All right, it will be reintroduced in 90 days then. Right. Anything else, Mr. Cook? No. Mr. Cook. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to thank Mrs. Eggleston, Mr. Grins, and uh, Mr. Cook, along with the two candidates, Mrs. McKenzie and Mrs. Hopkins, for a fine Meet the Candidates <clears throat> night. They, they done, all done a fine job. Even though I had to bring water from Mrs. Eggleston. <laughs> Mr. Bridge. Um, can I have some clarification on, on the motion for the law director so I'm on the same page so when I communicate this with her I know exactly what's going on? To have her write a amendment to the rules of council for proclamations. They need to be voted on by the council at large before issued. So there's other things too, like giving them at council meetings? Yeah. Okay, things so so basically a quorum to even issue a proclamation? Yeah. Okay, quorum to issue, and then where it can be given? Yep. And then that it needs to be on an agenda about some of the regular council meetings, that what I heard too. When you think of those situations to where there may not be a council meeting, if one of the mayors, it could be this mayor, it could be a major mayor in the future, gives a proclamation, say it's off site for opening of a new building. So we're going to have some have some language in there that has that clause that says, given certain circumstances, uh, it may have to be given off site. Now, the fact that it's going to be off site, do you guys want that to be by quorum as well? Could that be well, possibly be with a motion by council that it be off site? But a motion, but you got to vote on it at least, right? Okay. Let me think of any other kinds of tools with that covered. Okay, I think I got it. Yes, there are. Um, Does council have anything else? Mr. Lowry. I vote we or move we adjourn. Sick. We are adjourned. <laughs>